All right guys, welcome back to another video. This one is slightly different, but I figured you guys would actually uh, enjoy this one. I got an email last night from a filmmaker in Florida and he's looking at buying a DSMC2 used in today's market. So he wrote out a long email and instead of writing a big long email back, I figured I'd make a video about it. And a lot of the questions I feel like you guys would also have. And so this might be relatable for you guys. So I figured I'll make a video, talk about it. And yeah, let's just dive into it. I'll post a screenshot here of the email so you can see it, but uh, he starts off, Hey Drake, my name is James and I'm a filmmaker out of Tampa, Florida, and I'm in the market for my first RED camera as the scale and quality of my work is going up. Congrats on searching for your first RED camera. I've definitely been there and there's a lot of questions and hopefully I can answer them here. I recently shot a feature documentary that's now on video on demand platforms and I have more in the pipeline over the next two to three years. I've always like every filmmaker aspired to own a RED. Yep. And with the used prices becoming more affordable, I can actually afford one, which is true. The prices of RED cameras have gone down, which is great for us trying to buy them. Um, I, on two sites right now, I'm looking at a Raven and a Scarlet W for a thousand or 2,500 all in and I can get them up and running for under five grand. However, I hate the crop factor of the Raven. I believe it's 1.7 or 1.8, which is a bummer because I'm coming from the full frame world, A7S3 FX3 and needing to shoot 14 to 24 just to get the standard 35, 50 millimeter look is annoying. The takeoff is the beautiful image. I believe the Scarlet W is a 1.5 X crop. Again, not ideal, but better than the Raven. If you're used to a full frame camera, yes, a super 35 millimeter camera will feel tighter but I don't think of my Super 35 cameras like my Komodo as a crop sensor. I think of it as a Super 35 millimeter sensor. And most of the lenses that I use on it are Super 35 lenses. They're made for that camera. So I'm not thinking full frame versus Super 35. I'm just thinking Super 35. And most cinema lenses are Super 35. They are, there are more and more full frame lenses coming out that are cinema, but it's still majority super 35. So I just, it's a mental shift how you think about it. I don't think or compare full frame or super 35 at all. I just know what I'm shooting on super 35 cameras. And I think that's just stepping out of that full frame world into that super 35 millimeter world. It's just something to get used to. My biggest question and our fear is that these outdated cameras are a poor investment and red doesn't make them anymore even though they're still servicing them. However, a tech told me that they will service them until they ha no longer have parts. So once they run out of parts, you're screwed if you have an issue. So yes, they don't make them anymore. Uh, yes, they are still servicing them. Uh, and to be honest, they serviced the DSMC one for a long time. I think all the way until the Komodo came out, if I'm not mistaken, they were still servicing the DSMC one. And now there's some third parties that still can repair them. So I feel like the longevity and the serviceability of the DSMC2s is gonna last a long time. And to be frank, the DSMC2s are just a bulletproof camera. Of course, everything can have its issues, especially in technology, but it's such a bulletproof camera. I've accidentally dropped one on concrete, picked it up and kept shooting. So to be honest, I'm not super worried about the serviceability of them. I think that it will last a long time. Um, plus I know that cameras like the FX6, which are top contender for me already being in the Sony ecosystem, have a ton of features. Red cameras do not have like internal NDs, autofocus, lighter weight, audio inputs, email for Sony lenses, etc. Let's break this down. Internal NDs. Yes, the FX6 has internal NDs. And if you're a run and gun documentary shooter, the internal ND can be useful, especially you don't have to deal with external NDs. For me, I don't use NDs a lot. And if I do, a matte box or an external filter is fine. I don't have a problem with it and I've done it quite a bit. So the internal ND doesn't really bother me. Um, but if you absolutely need it all the time, that could be annoying. 
autofocus. So the only time I use autofocus is right here when I'm shooting a vlog or a YouTube video where it's just myself, I use autofocus. Otherwise, I don't use autofocus ever in the professional environment. Maybe if I was on an FX6 and I was shooting an interview, I would, but I, I don't shoot with autofocus ever. So yeah, there's that. Lighter weight, yes, they are lighter weight. I will say that they can feel rather plasticky. The Sony cameras can feel a little plasticky to me. The uh, DSMC2s are so bulletproof and robust and they feel solid. And yes, they're heavier, but they just feel really nice in the hand and it feels like it's never gonna break or explode or have any issues. So that's just something to think about. Audio input. So if you need XLRs, you can buy the production module for the DSMC2 and it has two full-size XLR with 48 volt phantom power, all that kind of stuff. Or if you want the base IO module, you can use the wind camera A box and plug it in and then you get two either mini or full-size XLRs, I don't remember, but there are ways to get XLRs on your DSMC2. And then E-mount lenses, this is a big deal. If you are shooting Sony and all you have is E-mount lenses, they will not work on your DSMC2 or Komodo or anything like that. You will have to get different lenses. So my entire lens collection back here is EF for that reason. I can shoot pretty much on any platform, Canon, Sony, RED, whatever. That's why I've kind of stuck to the EF line. I don't even have RF lenses for that reason. So if you only have E-mount lenses and you're looking at getting a RED, that might be a deal breaker. And you might be looking at the FX6 for being able to keep your E-mount lenses. That's kind of a big deal. And it's everything with the FX6 is six grand included, no need for additional accessories. So one thing to think about with the FX6 is external power for accessories. So if you're running a Teradek or a Ninja or anything external that needs power, you either have to run a battery on itself or add a V-mount plate to add a battery. Maybe you're already thinking that through. The DSMC2s run off of V-mounts and they have a DTAP port on the top and then obviously you have more on the battery. So that's something to think about is powering your accessories with a Sony. Red still pulls its weight on set and everyone who knows Red automatically wants to hire you if they know you have one. All right, so I'll quickly talk about this. When I first bought my Red, I thought I was gonna get way more jobs because I have a red and the answer was no. I didn't get any other work because I had a red. I got work because of the skill that I had. It didn't matter what camera I was using, a red or a 1DX or A7S II, it didn't matter. I just got hired because of the skill that I had. So if you're thinking you'll get more work because of the red, I've found that not to be true. Plus no one in my market rents them out. So it can be another source of income for me. Yes, you can rent it out. I feel like there's loads of red rentals out there. Everyone rents the red. Um, I even rent mine. I don't put them on share grid. I usually only rent them out to people I actually know or trust. But I feel like there's a lot of red rentals out there, lens rentals, bar lenses, whatever. Uh, but maybe in the documentary genre, there's not a lot of people renting them out. But I'm not saying you shouldn't rent it out. I'm just saying that I feel like there's loads of rentals out there. Sorry for the long question. In 2023, is it worth getting a Raven or Scarlet W for as cheap as the prices as I'm finding than to have a solid workhorse camera or did I miss the boat and they're just a little too old for the current market if I were to use, uh, or if I were to get a used brain? It, I'd be better off getting something in the newer, more updated sensor, maybe more features. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay, so to wrap this up, I feel like in that $6,000 price point, if you need slow-mo, this might sound funny, but the Raven Scarlet W, the Dragon Sensor, the Dragon X, they have great slow-mo at four, five, six K. If you don't need slow-mo, the Komodo is six K and I even bought a body for $3,800. So if you don't need the slow-mo, I might look into a Komodo kit in the six K price point and then you have a new camera that's fully supported by red it, that's just something to think about but if you want slow-mo or if you'd like the dsmc2 if you like the dragon look i probably wouldn't spend any more than 5k for a raven or scarlet w and that's kind of pushing it i know there's a couple on ebay for like 3400 four grand i think those are good deals um if you want to spend six grand I, I would be looking at a dragon x kit or a helium kit something that's higher resolution and a little bit 
more modern of a camera rather than the Scarlet W or the Raven. Something to think about with the Raven is it doesn't have the interchangeable lens mount, so you are stuck with just EF versus you can put a PL or EF on any of the other DSMC2 cameras. And then lastly, Red Raw. That's a big deal. Red Raw is an incredible codec and it's so lightweight on your CPU. It's a beautiful codec to color. It just kind of changes the game. I know with Sony, you have to record to a Ninja for Raw and it's just not the same. Blackmagic Raw is not the same. Red Raw is where it's at. And once you start using it in your workflow, I don't feel like you would want to go back to any other codec. So that's just something to think about. Red Raw is incredible. All that to say, is a DSMC2 worth it in 2023? I think the answer is yes. I had no plenty of filmmakers rocking their Monster Wars or Helium every single day, creating epic commercials and epic content. And they're getting a lot of bang for their buck out of that camera. So are they still a great camera to have? Absolutely. Are they gonna last you? Absolutely. I've seen loads of them with well over a thousand hours, no problem on the sensor and they still work great. So James, I hope this video helps you make a better decision. And for you guys, if you have questions like this and you were thinking about getting a DSMC2 Red, I hope that this video helps you in making that decision. And if you want me to break down a question that you have, feel free to go over to my website, drakelser.com, send me an email and I'm happy to create a video breaking down any questions that you have. So thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.